Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome back to another video. I apologize that this month has been so slow on videos. I haven't had a chance really to do very much with Linux this this month. Uh, it being the holiday season, there are so many things with work, and I have been so busy that it has been so difficult for me just to even think about stuff that is just fun and not work related. So that being said, let's get into this video. I have a Christmas treat. Now, for a lot of you, this won't apply, but for some of you, this may be very helpful. I have a Logitech Harmony remote and one of the very, very minute few reasons for having to have a Windows OS or virtualized Windows or something has been so that I can program my Logitech Harmony remote. Well, no more. I have figured out, and I should have done this years ago, to Google and search for some sort of a solution, other than just saying, well, it just won't work in Linux. So, here is the solution for making your Logitech Harmony Remote work in Gen 2. First off, I went and I did a Google search on how to program the Logitech Harmony Remote, program Logitech Harmony Remote Linux. And I found this very useful Ubuntu Forums blog right here. Now before I did this, I just tried to see what would happen if I ran the executable with wine and it came up and it pretended to install it looked like it was running but it would never see the Logitech USB device when I would go into it and plug it in so it wasn't talking to the ports through wine then I found this article here and this kind of pointed me in the right direction he speaks in here about using concordance and congruity. And congruity, when I did a search on that, is a SourceForge program that interfaces with Logitech Harmony remotes. So super! Does Gentoo have that? I did an emerge and found no. Not natively but there are overlays with layman that we can look at so i went over here to the gen 2 portage overlay and after typing in congruity i found it and it states here that there are two overlays one called spectrum 2 and one called ephemeral which is using layman now layman is what most people use within Gen 2, and I'll be honest, I've not heard of outside before. I'm not sure about that. But layman is something I use on a regular basis. So the next thing what we do here is we open up our handy dandy configuration here, and we say layman A ephemeral. And what that does is that adds the overlay, running git, and configures it all. Now when we do and emerge-s congruity right here, you will see that we see x11 miscellaneous congruity is now available, whereas before it came back with nothing. So, we want to install that. So we say emerge-av congruity. And yes, I have not updated my system in 38 days. I should do that soon. And there are some weird errors that come up, which you can ignore for right now it's pretty much just some garbly gook talking about how some dependencies require pardon my alarm was going off ah <sighs> you know I tried to silence everything and I had my phone on vibrate I had it on silence yet alarms they ignore that sorry about that anywho there are some little things here that you can kind of ignore it's not that big a deal uh, come on! It comes on down here, and it says that both of these need additional keywords to make them work. So, as you can see, the following keyword changes are necessary to proceed. And then it says that they need the tilde AMD64 for both of them, and 
since I have it configured to say if I ask for it to ask for this sort of thing, it then says, would you like to make those changes in your config files? Which I say, yes, I would. Afterwards, of course, we need to run etc update and then it checks for those. It finds that there is the file etc portage package dot accept underscore keywords and then it goes ahead and shows us what those changes are going to be. For instance, right here is the update where it says required by congruity. X11 miscellaneous congruity 15-R1 needs tilde AMD 64. Also required by congruity. Congruity, we have lib concord tilde AMD 64. Of course I want those changes, so I say I want one, which says replace the original with the update, right here. It does so. And now, if we do an emerge-av congruity, it comes back and it doesn't give us all that little error message because it's all been taken care of. And it says that we can now install these new and they have the correct keywords. So we say yes, install them. And of course it goes through blah 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 blah. I'm fixing it, I'm making it all better, blah 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 blah. Installing, 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 all good. No errors. Now, we have the heart of the program that is going to make it so much easier to work with Harmony Remote Controls in Linux, specifically Gen 2. We go back over here to this and it gives us a URL that we now need to go to instead of using the software for Harmony Remote. And that is right here, HTTP members.harmonyremote.com. Now for those that are Harmony Remote users, you may want to bookmark this so that you always have it available. Or at least bookmark this Ubuntu article so you can get to it. We click on this. It says software updates available. We hit next. And I have already set up my installation because I have tested all of this before I decided to say hallelujah, hallelujah. It broke. And so I've tested it so I know it works. And that's why you are seeing this video. Once you have logged into your account, you will see these settings here. Adjust setup, buttons and menus, custom images, favorite channels, more options, and update remote. So, you want to do all your settings, and for this review, we shall show you just something simple like customizing images. And if we look at our background, for instance, we see I've got the Tux Penguin as my background, and that's what I want to keep. So I save that for now. And we're just going to set something else up, you know, I also have set it so that I can see my background better. We have you know, no pictures, but as you can see, you can have the default, you can have the uppercase, and they all have icons, or you can just do it with no icons, and that's what we want, Harmony with no icons. We save that. And then we want to back up, and here you can also set up customizing device modes, etc., etc. All these menus, you just have to work through, find the ones that you want and set them up. Now once you've completed these operations you're going to come back up here to where it says home and click on that and you can finish doing any other customizations you want. When you're done you want to do an update remote. Now here I've read that there's a couple ways you can do it. If you have it set up so that it will ask you if you want to use what you want to use the file for you can actually point it to that congruity application. If you don't have it set and you have it set so it just automatically downloads everything to your downloads folder which is the way I have it, we just go ahead and click next and as you see it says connectivity easy dot easy hex has been downloaded. Now what we want to do over down here is I'm just going to clear the screen for now and we're going to say congruity connectivity.easy hex. Now you'll want that 
to be with that. Other, if you just type in congruity, it'll say that it's expecting an argument and it's not there. So we type that in, we hit enter, up pops congruity. Welcome to congruity, a programming application for Logitech Harmony remote controls. Please ensure the remote control is connected before proceeding. So you then take your handy dandy USB cable. You can't see this at this point, but I am now plugging in my Harmony remote control. And anybody that's interested, I have a Harmony 880, which is very old. I've had it for many years, but it has been a lifesaver and a wonderful utility. I hear that it says beep and it says USB connected. Now we hit forward. It says detected remote. It says it is successfully connected to a remote Logitech Harmony 880. And if you're interested in the details, you can see down here all the information. It is seeing it. Everything is good. We hit forward. It now is notifying the website. And as you can see back in the back, communication with the Harmony remote has been confirmed. We can now click next. It examines the settings queuing the request and now downloads update.easy hex. Now if you had it set so the congruity actually worked it should have opened up congruity but for in my case I have to go ahead and just say close open back up here and we want to now run congruity downloads update.easy hex brings it up again now another thing I noticed is I had to disconnect my Harmony remote and reconnect it at this point for it to see it otherwise it says searching now it sees that it detected it you can see that it's there I hit forward it now checks the website preparing remote erasing it and once this is all done, it will have updated our remote with all the proper changes that we have created. Now we will wait and see. It is now writing the configuration. It doesn't take too long, and it takes about the same amount of time as it does as in a Windows environment. The great thing about this is, yeah, it's a few extra steps, but it's a lot less hassle than trying to boot back into a Windows environment and do all this then get right back out of it just for your Harmony remote. This is a wonderful tool, an excellent tool, and I am very happy that I have found it. <clears throat> so, we're verifying the update. And one thing if mommy, maybe you guys have noticed too on your Harmony remotes, is that the date and time always gets screwed up after a few weeks or a month or two of not having an update so one thing that you can always check to make sure hey did it get updated and you're wondering is if you look at the Harmony remote when it's all done to see if the time was really set proper all right and once that is done we can click forward it says operation is completed successfully close and if we disconnect our Harmony remote, we should see that we are now updated with all the changes that we have done. It is good to go. You can test it out, but you should also see on the web page here something should have popped up. There it is. And if you're familiar with the operation as you normally see in Windows, it's going to ask you now is everything working the way you want it or do you need to continue to make adjustments? And I have tested this and said, yes, everything is now good. Next. And we are back to this. And at this point, we can do a log out. And we are done. And close that. So I hope that helps you guys out. I hope some of you that have the Logic Harmony Remote and have said, Oh, golly, this is the only thing keeping me from being 100% Linux. That we have now solved the final dilemma in your issue. This was an excellent thing that I'm very happy about. 
because now I no longer need Windows just for that one little thing. Now, if only I could come up with a better way to play my classic games. I'm getting there, folks. I'm getting there. So I hope everybody had a great holiday. The new year is coming soon. I do hope that things will calm down and I can make some more videos and continue to provide content. I hope you enjoy that which I put out. And everybody, whether it's morning, evening, noon or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Have a great holiday. We will chat with you later. Bye, guys.